All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, oh, let me make sure we good on Facebook. And we should be good on Facebook. All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to P-Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, June the 26th, 2022. And why am I frozen? What in the world? Come on, y'all. Okay, there we go. What's, what's going on with my... Hold on, we okay. There we go. I don't know why I was frozen, but we good now. So, welcome to Peak Town Fresh the Sunday edition. I'm Pastor Darren Moore coming to you live from Portsmouth, Virginia. And welcome. So, let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Uh, if you're checking us out on Facebook, we ask you to do me a favor press that share button. Um, let us know where you're checking us out from. Uh, give us a shout out as well. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name. We give you glory and honor for this wonderful day you've given us. We thank you for everybody that you have here with us, God. And I pray that um, for those who are watching on Zoom, those who are in present, those who are even looking at YouTube down the line, I pray that you will allow this word to impact our lives, Lord God. Let it speak to our hearts, even into our emotional centers. So, Father, we thank you and we pray that this word will bring healing in our lives. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. 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 All right. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get this thing going. So um, for those who are just joining us, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God and we utilize technology. Uh, we'll ask a lot of questions. You can ask questions and comment on the topic. And we have a great time. Uh, welcome to Noble T. Mackell. Also, welcome to Chris Alvarez checking us out on Facebook. Um, so, our, we always like to start out with a question of the day. And our question of the day is, when have you felt like you really blew it and couldn't fix it? When have you felt like you really blew it and couldn't fix it? So, our Facebook commentary, we had um, we had a couple responses. Um let me see, we, uh, all the time, and me too, okay? So, anybody else want to share? When have you felt like you really blew it and couldn't fix it? Can I speak up on that right now, Pastor, please? Yes, sir. Um, I felt like I really blew it today. Um, when I read that message from um, Precious, about John going off the road and blowing two tires and had to fix them. And I thought that was the reason why he couldn't come in today. Um, you know, because he spent all his money on the tires or whatever. I kind of went off the handle on that and said some things I shouldn't have to John, you know, and, um, you know, and I, I really am fearful that I, even though I, I have asked for forgiveness, that, you know, I hope I didn't irreparably, irreparably mm -hmm. um, damp that relationship with him because, you know, I shouldn't have said the things that I did in the manner that I said them. And, and it's like, you know... <clears throat> I, I just, you know, I hate feeling like I am right now. And, you know, so, you know, I had to put that out there. You know, it, it just kind of coincides. It's just a coincidence that you asked that question today. But Amen. Um, that's being real. Well, thank you, John. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to put John Black. Well, I'll read what John Black said. Okay. Um, as an answer to the question, he said, I ran off the road when I fell asleep behind the wheel at the end of a five-night revival marathon. Two of my tires blew out when I hit the curb and could not be fixed. I had to get them replaced. Mm -hmm. mm. That's, That's real. Scary. That's real. That's real. Anybody else? When have you felt like you really blew it and couldn't fix it? Well, <clears throat> I, would, I would say, you know, you know, it's like, I mean, it's like daily you gotta 
check yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. You constantly, I, I personally find myself constantly checking myself, checking what I say, checking what I, what I think for fear of blowing it, you know, because I, I think I saw in, in, in the chat earlier, earlier um, this morning, somebody said, every day, I blow it every day. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't agree with that more. You know Amen. what I'm saying? You, 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 because of our, because of our imperfection, because we're living in this broken, in this broken world, you know, we mess up on the regular. Come on. But I find myself constantly checking myself, checking mm -hmm. to see, you know, did I say that right? Did mm. I say, could I have said that better? Could I have done that better? And, and, and sometimes I find myself really, you know, um, yeah, I, I didn't say that right. And just like the brother um, acknowledged just now, you know, you go back and you apologize. You know, you, I, I find myself, you know, going back and apologizing. And, you know, I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I um, you know, I apologize as the case might be. I think um, um, Matthew uh, speaks about that uh, in, in the Gospels, talk about, you know, you gotta crucify yourself and daily die to yourself. Let a man examine himself. Amen. You know, so that's yeah, that's that, that's my sharing. Amen. That's what's up. Well, let's go ahead and get ready to dive into this thing, shall we? So, um, last time we um, talked about uh, what was it? And we've been studying the book of First John, and now we're in chapter three. Okay, and so I'm gonna go ahead and begin reading. So we'll be in 1 John chapter 3, and I'll begin reading in verse 16, okay, for context. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So, as we're looking at this, all right, so th th this, there's a lot right here, okay? We talked a bit about the first time, you know, last time we talked about how we can demonstrate love towards our fellow brothers and sisters by meeting their needs through service or goods, right? And so, but we're going to pick up now on verse 18. So it says, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but what? In deed and in truth. Okay? So, as we're, my question first off is, what does that mean to you? Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Not love for what you say. By our but not by what we say. All right, hold on one second. All right, so you said what, John Cummings? <clears throat> By our actions and not what we say. Okay, amen. Anyone else? Pretty much what he said. Um, um, showing your love through, you know, um, acts of services instead of saying, hey, I love you, I love you, I love you, and not, and just being all talk. Okay. Good. And so as we remember last time, we were reminded of the, you know, familiar thing that talk is cheap. And I want to say what's up. Welcome to Isaiah Spate, checking us out from, I guess, out Cali now. And also Mari Santiago Howard. Welcome. Um, also, Lenzel. All right, that's what's up. He said, love is action. Amen. So, so we get that part, okay? And, but this word deed, Okay, is the Greek word ergon. And we've heard of a similar word, right? We've heard of ergonomic, right? Anybody ha have 
a, like an ergonomic, oh, pardon me, ergonomic keyboard or ergonomic desk or chair. And what it's designed to do is to help you to work easily, right? It's to help you to work. Now, usually we t you do it in terms of comfort, but it's really to help you to work and accomplish whatever task you're trying to do. So that word for deed is work. So he says that, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So then deed means work or what we do. So I got a question for you. Can charitable giving take the place of or make up for good works? Wow. Well. Okay, so you said or replace. Mm-hmm. Mm. No. Because it tells us to and, and, and there are some people who, who believe and think that, you know what, I have money, but you know, I'm not going I know you need some help around the house or you know, you might need some help in the yard or whatever the case might be, but instead of me actually helping, I'll just give you some money. Mm. And so we have to understand here because many of us have this sentiment that we can basically, it's, it's almost like the way of um, the Catholics, some of the Catholics during the time of King James. They thought that they could pay their way. And so we have to be careful of that. Amen? All right. Well, so, that, re that reminds me of that lesson that you taught us with Cain and Abel. You mm -hmm. know, Cain gave us the access of what he had, you know, because he grew his vegetable instead of Abel who, you know, gave his firstborn of his first cattle and all that stuff. Right, because he, he dedicated to, to give that in faith and, and he, he already planned intentionally. That you know what, no matter what happens, I'm gonna give my firstborn of this this of the flock. I don't know the rest of them might be bow legged and crippled, but and I might not be able to even have it. They might all be diseased, but I'm trusting, so I'm gonna give him the best that I have, the first, the very first that I have. So, but so as we're seeing here in this passage, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth then indeed means what it says, okay? So in, in works, in, in serving, all right? So we get that part. Next part, he says, indeed and in what? Truth. Truth. So here's a question. And so this word truth is the, the Greek word aletheia, okay, which we talked about before. Um, but here's a question for you. Because many of us may have read this passage or some of us may be reading it for the first time. But how can we love in truth? What does it mean to love in truth? Well, I would say that that has a lot to do with what um, Jesus was describing in John 14 about how a tree shows its fruit. You know, the fruit of the tree is what actually shows what kind of a tree that is. So okay. the truth in this part would be, you know, the truth of who you are, the truth of what you what you're doing, you know, and and what it actually shows. Amen. Okay, good. Anyone else? What does it look like? to love in truth. I believe that it's a heartfelt thing that you don't just go through the motions, but you actually have the sincerity of the em emotions. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Christina? It's basically following what he said, but it's similar to living in your truth. Don't do, don't do an act to gain something from it. Actually do it because that's what you're supposed to do, like live in your truth. Okay. So I believe, yeah, that's, that's, do what I 
child of pure authenticity. Okay. Don't have no hidden motives or intent. Mm-hmm. And Amen. follow the word to back it up with. Amen. So then as we're looking at this, okay, so and all of these are wonderful, great answers. Um, but one of the things that when I'm looking here in this word of, of truth, because when we have here in, in the Greek aletheia, you know, when you're talking about uh, objectively, it's in reality, it, it's certainty. And so it's to love in a manner that is truly undeniable or unquestionable. Okay. So, and, and let me give an example of this. And let's see. Um, all right. Chris Alvarez says to give freely in every way to not treat an act of love like a product mm-hmm. and expect some kind of currency in return. Mm. Right. That's deep, Chris. That's currency. real. I hear you. Mm. Wow. All right. So to love in truth means that it's undeniable. And let me give you an example. See, the, some of you may have been settling for what I would call instead of, there's a difference between love and truth and suspect love. All right. See, truth is undeniable. It stands alone. But if it's suspect love, see, which some of you may have been settling for in your relationships or your interactions with others. So let, let me give you an example. See, Suspect love is some of your friends can see it, some can't, others don't. Some are like, girl, I don't know about him. Mm-hmm. Or you might hear, have that, dear, are you sure about this? As opposed to somebody saying, we can clearly see that he is completely head over heels in love with you. Mm-hmm. Can you see the difference there? Mm-hmm. there? There's a difference. There, There's one that's subjective and there's one to the point that it's almost fully objective. No matter where you're standing, you can see. So here's a question for us. Somebody might even say, girl, we can tell he loves you so much. Even a blind man can see that he loves you. Hmm. Can the same thing be spoken of regarding our love for others? Yeah, mm. yeah I would say yes. You say what? I would say yes. You would yeah. say yes? Okay. In my case, yes. So if somebody was looking on the outside, could they see clearly that we love our neighbors? Mm-hmm. And see, watch this. Here's the thing about love. See, we can say we love in our hearts. But in order for somebody to see it and it to be love and truth, Mm -hmm. it has to be acted out. That's the full nature of love. As we talked about last week, love is a verb. Mm -hmm. And so truth can be clearly seen by everyone around. Truth is like a mountaintop. You could be 20 miles away and still see the top of that mountain. It's undeniable. Now, whether they choose to accept it or not, that's a different story. And whether they accept the truth. They might be like, you know what? I see, on, I see that mountain up top, but I don't believe it's raining up there. I don't believe it's snowing up there. Right? They could say that. But the fact that they see it up top is undeniable. So, here's another question. How do we know if we are indeed loving in truth? I think, I, I think for me, I got to go back. To, I gotta go back to the basic. I gotta go back to the wood. I gotta go back to the to the ultimate example, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. And for in order for me to know if I'm loving in truth, it gotta line up with Jesus's perfect example. Yeah. 
And so I always, I always try to, you know, use that, use that, um, that analogy, Definitely. WWJD, what would Jesus do, mm -hmm. you know, and if it lines up with, with Jesus' example, then I think I'm good to go. But I think, I know I'm good to go. Amen. All right, that's good. That's great. Anyone else? How do we know if we're loving in truth? When you're doing it with intent and not to be a praise for it, just when you're doing it from your heart. Okay. Yeah. Amen. That's good. That's good. So let's break this thing down. And by this, and also just a reminder, thank you for everybody checking this out on Facebook. If you can, uh, make sure you press that share button or tag somebody. Um, but watch this. As we get to verse 19, it says, And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall what? Assure our hearts before him. So, first off, this word assure is the Greek word, Patha, which means to persuade. So in verse 19, watch this, y'all. We see two things. The first part is that, and by this we know that we are of the truth. So we'll know and we'll have the confidence that we are of the truth. And so this phrase of the truth, it's, it's not something that we normally would use every day, right? Mm -hmm. Do you go up to somebody and say, hey, are you of the truth? Mm. <laughs> if, if, if you're like, yo, I don't, I don't know what you've been smoking. I don't know what set you claiming or banging with, but I'm not sure if I'm down with that. Right? But if we understand it of the truth, when I'm thinking of of, of means, and, and even in the Greek, it means out of. Okay? It's something that comes out of something. Created from the stock and the raw materials of truth. So if, if you can imagine a sculpture or, you know, somebody, watch this. They take some hickory wood. They take a, 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 a branch, not a branch, but a big trunk of hickory wood. And they take that and they begin to whittle it. They begin to sculpt it into something beautiful. But what was it that what did it come out of that sculpture? Let's say if it was a a a, a, a chair. Mm -hmm. What did it come out of? The wood, the tree. The hickory wood. Mm -hmm. Now, remember. So, of the truth means created from the stock and the raw materials of the truth. Remember, there's a little phrase that says, we are what we what? Uh, eat. eat. You are what you eat from your head down to your feet. Dr. Seuss 101, no. But, um, so, but watch this. How does this apply? If we consume a consistent diet of lies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drama, mm -hmm. gossip, mm -hmm. doubt. Yep. What will you tend to believe? All, All, those, things. Things. All those things. Except the logic. Amen. Is that real? No, it's real. And so what happens is we consume. And so think about what you do when you're flipping down your timeline. Mm -mm. Or think about. What you do when you're just scrolling through those TikTok videos or, or what you do when you pick up the phone and, and call somebody who you know ain't talking about nothing mm -hmm. or FaceTime that person. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? And so, exactly. I want to draw our attention to the book of Philippians, okay? The letter of Philippians, chapter four. And what's up? Welcome, Haley. Um, so watch this. Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. What? There's that word? True. What? Hmm. 
whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, then the what? Think on these things. That's what we need to be meditating on. That's what we need to be filling ourselves with. Some of us, the problem is we are walking around in depression and in doubt, but the problem is we're feeding the monster. We're feeding the monster and we're wondering why we're living in fear. But the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. But instead of walking in this love, instead of infusing ourselves with the word of God and what he says, instead of listening to songs of light and joy, we're listening to I can't live without them and I'd rather jump off a cliff. And wondering why we're so affected mentally and emotionally. Is is everybody understanding this thing? And so the second part, and so we have to be careful because the first part, it says, and this, by this, we know that we are of the truth. We got to know what we come from. Y'all know that we come from good stuff. Mm -hmm. See, some of us, you know, we, we like to lessen ourselves and lower our standards. We may have been raised a certain way and we may be of the good stuff. But we might settle for something less that we know it, it, it is nothing but a SMH. I shake my head when I see you. <laughs> y- y- y'all, y'all, are, y- are y'all understanding this? Yeah. Is this real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so watch this. And then number two, and then what we got to do is understand, because what this does is this affects how we view and perceive ourselves. And the problem is when we view ourselves in an insecure place, then we project upon everyone else. Watch this. It's like if I have something on my glasses and I don't realize there's something on my glasses, but I go around telling everybody else, Oh, you, you need to straighten up because you're not focused. You, I, 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 I can't. I, you, you, are you understanding what happens? It causes me to view the world around me differently. And now I'm projecting my insecurities on everyone else. And instead of looking at everything objectively, I'm looking at it subjectively through the lens of my warped view. I'm walking around with cracked glasses and wondering why the world is all mixed up Mm. with the dirt. That reminds me of a story that I heard. Um, This guy, this guy walking around with, um, with some, um, you know, some, he got, got this big uh, motion and and, and mustache and and beard Mm. and he got some stale food stuck on his, uh, in his beard, Mm. in, in his mush and he's walking around. And everybody he comes in contact with, he's, he's like, man, you smell, you smell frowsy. He goes to the next person, man, you smell frowsy. You need to go, you need to go change. You need to go take a shower. He comes up to the next person, man, you smell frowsy. You need to go take, you need to go take a bath. He, he walks out in the street, this whole world smell frowsy. What's going on with this world? Not realizing that he got some, he got some old food stuck in his Come on, in, <laughs> come on. Come on. But that's real. That's real. Is anybody is anybody seeing this thing? I told you today we going y'all gonna feel like y'all on the couch today. Y'all gonna feel like and I don't mean just the P Town Fresh couch. But watch this. Then we get to the next part, and he says, Shall what? Assure our hearts before him. So, and again, we said that word assure means persuade. So shall persuade our hearts before him. Here's a question. When do we have to be persuaded? When we don't believe something is true. Say what? When we don't believe something is true. When you don't believe something is true. Mm -hmm. 
when we have doubts. Mm. And so, uh, you know, one of the things I thought about is I remember, you know, many, many occasions, you know, we've had, you know, if, if you live in any type of house or resident, well, house, you especially townhouse, whatever, you have people always trying to come and sell you stuff. And I remember one time we had this salesman come, and this was to our old house, and he was selling this uh, water filtration system. And so what he did was he said, "Hey, look, all right, let's 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 see a piece. Of, let's see see some of your carpet. Okay, cool." And he picked like a little square of the carpet, and took the water, and cleaned that one little square of the carpet. Now watch this. So first off, when you come come to me in my house saying, you, look, you, you, you need to purchase this water filtration system. I'm like, my water's good. Mm-hmm. It tastes good. It helps me when I'm thirsty. I'm good. It's not too salty. You know what I'm saying? It's the right color. It's clear. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> it gets me clean. I'm good. So... But then they take this water, their special water that's right. been filtered, and they take it and they pick a little square, a little 6 by 6 12 by 12 maybe 6 by 6 square and they just pour the water on there, no shampoo, no soap, no nothing. And they just go ahead and scrub mm-hmm. a little, little bit of... And next thing you know, that little bit of area <laughs> is clearer than everything else around. Mm. Just by water? Just by water. You remember that? Remember that demonstration, honey? Yeah, they did with the Kirby vacuum cleaner too. But yeah, that was some water, and I was like, "How you get the water?" And then you gonna clean one square? And then leave. What about the rest of the carpet? You got a whole room full of carpet. You clean one square. To buy it so you can do the rest. Mm -hmm. You can buy that thing. (laughs) It's too expensive. Nobody can afford that. But but can y'all see that? So what happened in the beginning? There was doubt in our minds about even the need for some water filtration system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But after this, this, this convincing sales presentation, we were persuaded that, you know what, we do need this. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, if anybody who's been here and hung out with us for any period of time, y'all know we got the good water. <laughs> now it's not the full water filtration system that they were trying to sell us the whole house and all that this was something I instil- installed myself underneath the sink but mm-hmm. they did such an effective job he was like, hey, I need to get me. that it still remained years later and was like you know what I need to get me some filtered water <laughs> are, are y'all understanding this thing mm-hmm. so where am I going with this See, when we go back to that word, it says, shall assure or persuade our hearts before him. See, how many times have we had to remind our hearts of our true identity before God? How many times have we doubted in our hearts who we were? What doubts flash down the timeline of your heart? Maybe the doubt that speaks I'm not good enough. Maybe the doubt that speaks, you'll never be like that other person. Or maybe that doubt that speaks, everybody will see through me. I'm a fake. Who are you fooling? Are are, are y'all understanding this thing? Can anyone identify? Mm -hmm. Or or does this just sound like it's coming out of thin air and, and I have no concept of what I'm talking about right now? You really need to check me in somewhere on the couch myself. You're talking to me. So, as we're seeing this thing, ultimately then in this verse, we see two interactions. One, the interaction of our mind. He says what? He says, listen to this, and by this we what? Know that we are of the truth. See, what we know, we learn, we interpret through the lens of our senses and it filters into our mind and now it has a deposit and a registry. And so then on the other interaction, it's the interaction of the heart. The challenge is getting them to agree. Your mind and your heart. 
See, we can know and we can read God's word, but a lifetime of experiences tells us otherwise. Let me give you an example. So, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, I thought about in, in preparing and thinking about this, it's like marrying somebody and, you know, you're marrying this person. And for years, they were raised a certain way, to believe a certain way, to do things a certain way. And you were raised a certain way and believing a certain way. But watch this. And so, but now the two shall become one and you all have to live in the same bathroom. Mm -hmm. You all have to be in the same kitchen. And so when I grew up, when I washed dishes, we had a dishcloth. Mm -hmm. You had one dishcloth and you washed your dishes. You washed your counters, you washed everything with that dishcloth. With that one dishcloth? And then you had a towel and you dry with that dishcloth. You dry, you know, with the dishes with the towel, right? So you had two dishcloths. My wife comes along, and she has two dishcloths. Mm -hmm. Now you have one dishcloth and one dish towel. Huh? You have one dishcloth and one dish towel. Yes. <laughs> I have two dishcloths. Yes, yes you have two dishcloths. Dish right. Yeah. And so she has one for the, the, counters. the counters. And then one for the dishes. And one for the dishes. Yes. And then she right. has a drying towel. Correct. Now. But you can't use a drying towel for your hands. Yeah. <laughs> so you need two towels. So, but ultimately, you have to decide you're going to live together. <laughs> and you have to agree. You have to meet each other in the middle somewhere. Mm -hmm. There have to be a little give, a little take, a little push, a little pull. And so, at some point, she has to accept that I get confused and I don't know which brat, which dishcloth is which. No, Just know that I'm using one and it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> or you can use a sponge for the dishes and then the towel. See, that's too confusing. No, no it's not. You don't need sponges. But you don't need no a, you, you only need napkins to dry your hands off. So you don't you can eliminate one of them dish towels. <laughs> you can use a nap a napkin for that. <laughs> But see, a when, paper towel. But the thing is, you don't want to wash the dishes with the same rag. <laughs> no, I understand that logic, but having two, two. Case in point. When you done with it, that's just over the top. Look, see, no, I'm gonna tell you. Look, and I, and I, I have a cleaning business, and that's a little, you know, that's a little. I, you know, I understand the washing part, but the drying of the hands, go get a new one, and then what you gonna do with that one? Throw it in the washing machine because it's dirty. Or is it clean? No, you just use a hand towel. But, yeah. but, but, no, but see, I got another one for you. Towel. I got another one for you because look, as a bachelor, I ain't believe in drying dishes. That's why you had a rack. Oh, Jesus. You just let them sit there and let them dry. Yeah, I rarely dry dishes. Let the I, Lord dry them. I rarely dry the dishes. <laughs> see? <laughs> and I got this washes now. See? Yeah, we like those. What those are said. my favorite. What she said. We don't have to worry about none of this. Well, we all agree on that. But, but, but we but, do but, that on the ship. We got it too. We got to dry. Mm -hmm. We don't hide that on the ship. <laughs> but at home, you know we're getting put to work. Mm -hmm. This washes. Can, can, can we sing at home? Can y'all see? Can y'all see though? Even in here, <laughs> it's hard to agree. Mm -hmm. So imagine what goes on between your mind yeah. and your heart, trying to get them on the same page. And me and my wife, we just celebrated 21 years of marriage, and we still, you know. Oh, collect the items. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, because this, I'm not for real, it's, you know, this, this whole. Happy anniversary. This, this whole, like, <laughs> this whole age or whatever we're going through, it's like super polarized. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, I'm sticking to what I believe in, mm. and I don't care what you mm. know. Come on, I'm right, and that's that's not going. That's not looking good for the future. Come on, true. Mm. And you're right. And, and look, I gotta I gotta um, see something because uh, Christian had put something in the Facebook. He said, <laughs> "Precious is from the Bel Air School of Dishcloths." <laughs> <laughs> the Bel Air, not the Bel Air. She boozy with the extra <laughs> with the extra dishcloth. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Amen.
But you know it's going to be clean one way or the other. And that's on period. There you go. So, but watch this. So as we're seeing this then, we realize that we have to ultimately, in the same way, watch this. Whether it's between our head, whether it's between our heart, we have to agree to trust God's word. Mm-hmm. Not trust the sentimental experiences that we had. Mm-hmm. Not trust what everybody else said. Mm-hmm. Not trust how we felt. But trust what his word says. Because what ends up happening, it's almost like, watch this. It's almost like our heart puts us on trial. Look at this, verse verse 20 and, and 22. Well, actually, it says, yeah, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and knows all things. Mm-hmm. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his, his commandments. Mm-hmm. And so... Now, it's like, does anybody feel like they've been on trial by their heart? Yeah. Like, you know, yo, what's, what's going on? I'm doing all I can do. It's not good enough. And so, let's talk about this first part. If our heart condemns us. Here's a question. Is it healthy or unhealthy for our heart to condemn us? It's healthy. Healthy. Okay. Healthy. Okay. So I hear people saying it's healthy. Okay. Well, it depends on. Well, I mean, condemnation isn't good. Are you mean like showing your own faults? Well, no. We're 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 talking about condemnation. Well, I don't think so then, because there is therefore no condemnation for okay. those who are in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to go with no. Okay. All right. Who else? Let me stay with my guess. A little Can bit louder. Say the question again. Is it healthy or unhealthy for? Oh, excuse me. Hold on. Mm. For our heart to condemn us, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. See, the heart is a tricky thing, and it can it can deceive us sometimes, which is why we need God to assure our hearts. So there are things that our heart can condemn us of where, yeah, we rightfully need to be subject, but then there are things that our heart is in contradiction with what God is saying because of the the, the, the ways of our emotions. Okay, good. Anyone else? All right, let's see. So Haley says, sometimes healthy. If it leads to repentance, it is good. But if it is defeat, then no. Mm -hmm. And so let's break this down a little bit more. Okay, so. Okay. All right, so the word condemn in the Greek is the Greek word kata gnosko. Kata being down, gnosko to know. You're knowing down. You know something and you're even looking down. And 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 so when you are when we're talking about condemn in the Greek it means to find fault with, to blame. And so, think about this. If our heart blames us, points the finger at us, accuses us all the time, is that healthy? No. No. Okay. And so, Chris said, let's see, he said, it's healthy to step outside yourself and check yourself, but be fair and be kind also. Okay, that's good. But watch this. One of the things we got to realize is who is the accuser of the brethren? The devil. Exactly. And so we have to put things in perspective. 
So here's a question. Who should we trust? Our heart, which is subject, subject to our emotions, our own personal flaws and doubts, or God who knows all and sees all? See, the Bible says the heart is what? Deceitful. Who can know it? And what? You say, honey? Who can know it? Who can know it? It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? See, this brings us to help us to understand something. And I want to I'm gonna bring a little clarity here. There is a key difference between condemnation and conviction. Okay, and so what happened to my what, Facebook's still there, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Something just must have hit the. Okay, there we go. All right. So, watch this. Conde condemnation is toxic. Conviction is healthy. I want you to imagine this situation. I'm going to paint a picture for you to see the difference between condemnation and conviction. Hopefully it helps. You might have to fill it in. You know, I'm not the greatest artist. Sometimes you might have to, you know, I'm going to give you a stick figure. You can make it Michelangelo. All right. <clears throat> imagine a landlord who owns a building. Now, in one scenario, in this situation, he has this building, and because of consistent neglect of the repairs of this building, <clears throat> his building is ultimately condemned to be destroyed with the wrecking ball coming through because it's completely uninhabitable. Now, in the other situation, there has also been neglect of a building. Same building. Same style, whatever. And this time the landlord is convicted of neglect. Now, the landlord is given opportunity and encouraged, even with use of penalty or fine, to repair the building and bring it up to spec and redeem it from its state of destruction so it can be inhabited. Can you see the difference? Mm -hmm. The last case is conviction. The first case is condemnation. Condemnation says there's no chance or hope. This is bad, but there's no chance of it ever being any better. Mm -hmm. So you might as well give up while you're ahead. Conviction <clears throat> says this is bad, but it can be better if you tighten it up. And so condemnation, what it does, it piles it on. It put, piles it all on top of you. So you feel like you can't go on under the weight. Conviction corrects you, but ultimately it pushes you forward. And I want to draw your attention to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 11. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest <coughs> excuse me, his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, mm -hmm. just as a father, the son in whom he delights. That's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Can you sense, what do you sense here in this sense, in this passage? What emotion would you say is you sense here? And it clearly says it in Proverbs. For whom, exactly, whom the Lord loves. You sense this emotion of love and this correction. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's the it's the parent who disciplines the child because they want to see the child do better. Not the parent who whips the child within an inch of their life because they're mad and upset because some they had a bad day. The goal of conviction is correction, which leads to growth. The goal of condemnation is destruction, which leads to death. Yeah. And here's a passage of scripture that many of us are familiar with. Romans 8, as my wife alluded to earlier, beginning in 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh or walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, one of the things we have to understand, and then we get to verse, so we see then that this principle of condemnation, it's not healthy. It's not even godly. It's not God or endorsed. It's not God ordained. This is a tool of the enemy. As a matter of fact, it can't land. It can't rest on the believer according to Romans 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> this thing called conviction of by the Holy Spirit, he said that this, he will guide you into all truth. He will convict you if you're wrong. That that's the difference. And so then as we get to verse 21, it says, beloved. Thank you, honey. <coughs> if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. See, if we're not condemned in the heart, we're good. When it's that word confidence is the word Greek word para, parasia, which means freedom in speaking, unreserved in speech, or as we would translate it in our terms, in 2022 terms, no filter. But not in a bad way. See, if we're not condemned in our heart, then we can talk with God freely and openly. See, we don't have to hide or double back in our speech like Adam and Eve did when they were caught. Y'all remember? God coming to them. What's up? I, I see something missing here. I see y'all, somebody, it, you wouldn't know of this unless you Eight of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Mm -hmm. then, they, then what they do? They start backpedaling. See, 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 what happened was <laughs> she blamed the serpent. Watch this. And Adam blamed who? Her. We started the blame game. Instead of taking account of accountability and responsibility of our actions and making changes and adjustments, mm -hmm. We played that game and watch this. We played the blame game. Not only did we point the finger, but also implied and inherent was that condemnation game. And so we have to be careful of that. Here's a question. Do you stutter in your prayer closet before God? Or can you be real and open with them? God, God, you know, man. Mm. Lord, I, I um, I'm sorry because what, what 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 I was thinking about doing, but God, you know, see what happened was, you know, um, he he came over and, and he had them hoochie daddy shorts, <laughs> and, and after that it, it was over. I, I I couldn't help myself, and so you know, and, and I, I don't know what happened. It was this, maybe it was that, but in reality. You're talking about God who knew that you sent the text, what you're doing. 
at three in the morning. What you wearing? <laughs> are, are, are y'all un, you you understanding this thing? Mm -hmm. And so, when we go back to this passage here, again, verse four: If our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows. Oh, did I read this? I did. Oh. It, I'm sorry, I did it twice. Didn't realize. <laughs> I, was in, I didn't realize I had it written twice. I copied it twice. Okay. But, again, for the believer then, it's a win-win. Why do I say that? If our heart condemns us, don't worry. Why? God knows the truth anyway. He knows better if you're put unjustly on trial by your heart. But if our heart doesn't condemn us before God, you're good. If, if you're if, if, before God, you're good. Your heart doesn't condemn you, you're good. Mm -hmm. So for the believer, if your heart condemns you, you're still good because God knows better. And if it doesn't condemn you, you're good. Would y'all agree? Mm -hmm. I agree? I call that a win-win. So there's hope. And then... We can, since we're, we're good with them, we have confidence with them, we can speak openly and freely with them, then we can ask what we will and it shall be done. We can ask from him without a communication block. The real problem then lies not for believers, but for unbelievers. Why? Because their choice of belief, their choice of decisions has condemned them to death eternally. Unless, of course, they choose differently. For his will is that none should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of repentance. Because of how the love of God is demonstrated in our own lives to them. Amen. Thoughts, questions, comments, responses. Yeah. Brother Dirk. Yeah, that, that, that reminds me, you know, of, <clears throat> of people, you know, in your walk when you, 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 you know, you're trying to witness to some people and they say things to you like, man, I'm, I've done too much wrong. I've done too much wrong. I, it's hard. It's hard for me because, you know, I've messed up too, too much, you know, God ain't going to forgive me or something like, um, I got to get right with God first. I got to get right first before I do this, this whole Christian thing, this whole church thing, you know, I got to fix me first, you know, stuff like that you hear. Mm -hmm. And so to, to come back to, to that portion of scripture, you know, and what you said, they already condemn themselves because they don't know better. They're not, they, <clears throat> they haven't given their heart to, to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So because of that, because they're unsaved, because they're lost, they're already condemned. And by reason of their own admission, they condemn themselves. So like in the first example that I gave, that person condemned himself already. Mm -hmm. I'm too lost. I'm, 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 I'm too, you know, too far gone. God ain't gonna help me. God ain't gonna save me. You know, or, or in the example number two, they condemn themselves and they feel that it's only they can fix themselves. It's only they can make themselves right. And they gotta make themselves right before they can come to Christ. Amen. So, as the scripture says, there's no condemnation in mm -hmm. Christ. You got to get your heart right with Christ. Who is by just accepting, by just accepting Christ, 
that condemnation is already gone. It's a simple act of faith. Come by on. you accepting Christ, that condemnation is gone. And now we work on the second part. The right. second part is the conviction, as you said. Come condemnation on. is already gone. Come so on. Win win, as you said. Now we work on the conviction. When you get the conviction, you just give it over to God. Come on. You know? So Amen. That's real. That's and one of the things is that's one of the biggest lies that's out there is that mm -hmm. I'll 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 wait and right. I can yeah. wait and get myself good first and then get ready to come yeah. and make my entrance. If you could get yourself right, right. you wouldn't need. Right. Wouldn't yeah. need God. Amen. And you know, and you know. Even Jesus said, "Look, you know, those who are well have no need of a doctor." Right. So, but you know, I think this is definitely real. This is is very real. Excellent, excellent. Anyone else? Thoughts, questions, comment, response. I know we went deep here. We went down a couple rabbit holes. We, you know, Haley said I needed to hear this. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, I, yes, sir. I follow, I'll follow up on that to uh, expound a little bit further, just a little bit further, that is. I know it's complicated in, in our walk with Christ when we see people of different walks and we, we find it hard to understand where they are in their walk with Christ. And sometimes it's not as apparent as it should be when you're, when you're looking at the fruit of people and you're hoping that at least in their last breaths they can you know, how they, they'll be able to make it right with God, and we have to hold out hope. But in so many ways, they, you know, as a nation or as a people, he's been rejected. He, 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 he had been rejected when he came in human form as, 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 as the Savior, you know, as the Christ, as, as some would call a prophet. Hey, John, you're fading out. I don't know if you're going you away me? from your mic. Can you hear me better now? No. No? no? I, I hear you when you said no, but the first time, I don't know if you're moving, doing the WAP, I don't know what, but just keep the mic close to you if you can. Okay. It, I trace it back to when he was rejected by, by the children of Israel. You're, you're quieter now. You're, you're... <laughs> there you go. There you go. No kidding. Yes. That's good? Yes, this is good. Okay. Whatever you okay. do, just stay right here. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I trace it back to when he was rejected as, as from being Israel's king because they wanted a, a human king. And he pronounced himself, you know, OK, well, I'll give you guys a king. And he wound up giving them Saul and him being perfect and God being perfect. And as as Christ as also identified as perfect. And yet he was still rejected in all of his ways. We also realized that whatever they did to the green tree, you know, you can expect them to do worse to the, to the dry. He, him being perfect, and they called him a devil, but shit, they say about us as followers. But to have unity one to the other, and to, uh, as, as one of the scriptures says, if a brother or sister is overtaking the fault for us that are spiritual to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering ourselves also, at least we also be tempted to be able to have that heart that is full of forgiveness in advance when we reach out to them to have the grace to see beyond what their what their discrepancies are to know that it is not beyond what Christ can do oh wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death amen that's what's up thank you bro that's real that's real amen anyone else Thoughts, questions, comments, response. Christine? Yeah, and also like when 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 um another thing that came when y'all was doing the comparison was being um like doing self conviction and the whole condemning. I think people have an issue submitting. She really to do a um spirit of rebellious and relying on them own selves. And when you're trying to get through whatever deed that you did, I guess, if you want to say. Like, mm. whenever you feel like you did something bad and your heart is saying, oh, that was wrong, people don't be wanting to submit. It's like, it's, I feel like you have to submit to God. And that's the ego issue when you're like, I, I got that when you said, like, oh, I got to get right with God first. Like, no, just do it. You have to submit. 
Mm-hmm. It has to be a level of submission. You can't fight with yourself and say, oh, I'm going to do it on my own. Like, just with me and my own personal experience, I just had to, like, submit to God to be released from a lot of guilt and mm. grief that I was causing myself. Because I on. was trying it my way. Come on. And it won't work in. And I won't think, I don't think I was a rebellious type of spirit, but I think I did have issues with submitting. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and I'm talking about to the Lord, mm-hmm. like, you know, that type of submit. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, when I start, you know, like I used to get really bad dreams and I'm, I'm going, I'm going to the internet. Oh, what this dream mean? Why I'm having this nightmare? And one of my, old, one of my mentors was like, Open the Bible up and put it by your um she gave me Psalms twenty third. Mm-hmm. I haven't had a dream since then. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like my point is it's like you have to submit. You can't just keep going to relying on yourself to Come on. you know, get uh get through what you what you're gonna get through. Like I'm a PTSD sufferer and mm-hmm. I stopped drinking, I'm six months clean. Amen. And I submit it. Like I submit totally to God and like I feel like my PSD got better. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 But I say that to say because I was self medicating myself. Yeah, I prayed. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. But in reality, I cut out the alcohol mm-hmm. and I submitted to God. I picked up my Bible. And it's, it's like two different worlds. Mm-hmm. Come on. And when you sit here saying, oh, a drink ain't nothing, or oh, I'm going to drink this, in reality, I was suppressing. Mm-hmm. Every day. Mm-hmm. So when you constantly dying yourself, like with condemning, you causing yourself an amount of guilt that's unnecessary. Right? Yeah. Come on. True. And 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 I just feel like it taps into, you know, I ain't gonna go philosophy, but I feel like everybody has like a death wire, and you keep tapping into it, the spirit, and it all comes together and you be what they say I don't know I don't know the Bible verse but what they say in the Bible is like you be the cause of your own death like the, the sins of your wages is your death or something or death for your wages something like that Am I making no, the sense? wages of sin is, is death yeah. yeah the wages of sin is death mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. that's real mm-hmm. wow thank you Christina mm-hmm. thank you for being transparent that's, that's real that's amen. awesome amen, amen. All right, anyone else before we get ready to close out? Going once, going twice. All right. Well, I don't know about y'all, but this is, like I said, it's been one of those, um, you know, we, we could have we nicknamed this uh, therapy session. <laughs> and the, the title of today is The Trial of the Heart. The Trial of the Heart. And so, you know, we have to really, again, be open and candid and honest before God. You know, we got to be vulnerable. And, um, you know, we got to understand his truth. We got to feed ourselves his truth. We got to feed ourselves his word. We got to meditate on it day and night so that we can be like the tree that's in Psalms. It's planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in due season. You know, we can be that. But the problem is many of us are meditating on everything else. Mm-hmm. We meditating on everything else. And one of the things you think about, mm, when I think about the water, and if you think about a tree and a plant and water, you don't actually actively have to apply water to the plant. It just has to be around in the environment. It can be in the soil. And it can absorb it through the soil, through osmosis. And so one of the things we have to realize is that we also have a level of osmosis with us. And so in the same way we absorb what's, mm, Holy Holy Spirit, we absorb what's in the environment. Mm. We absorb what's in the soil that we place around ourselves. Mm. And some of us are wondering why we're not growing. Some of us are wondering because of this very thing that we're feeding ourselves with is herbicide. Mm. Killing ourselves. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 
Woo! With that, let's let's pray. Mm. Most gracious Father, we thank you for this word today. I thank you for this truth that causes us to tear tear back the curtain and pull back and open up our heart before you. Father, so many times we've allowed our heart to guide us, to lead us. But part of the problem is that the heart is only doing what it knows, and it only knows what it's been fed, yeah. which is the wrong thing. Yeah. Father, I pray that he'll, you'll help us to understand what is the true the truth that comes from your word that we might be built of truth out of truth to the point where we consume our we consume your word so much we consume your truth so much that we become saturated mm. that everyone around us everything around us becomes filled and changed and transformed because of what's in us which mm. is you Father, you said in your word, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, mm-hmm. then we can ask what we will and it shall be done. So many of us are so focused on asking what we want, what we can get, and it's what's in it for us. Mm-hmm. But the real thing that you want us to focus on is abiding in you and allowing your word to abide in us. Father, I ask you, to forgive us. We repent, Father, for instead of allowing your word to abide in us, we've allowed the lie to reside in us. The lie that says we're not good enough. The lie that says we're never going to make it. The lie that says anything contrary to your word. And Father, the lie that says we can make it on our own or we're good. But your word tells us, beware a man thinks he stands unless he falls. One of the things about being humble is that when we fall, we don't have far to go because we're already low to the ground. So we ask you, God, to help us to stay submitted before you, to stay yielded before you, and not to be victim of condemnation but be a champion of conviction of your Holy Spirit which prods us on, corrects us, chastises us, and helps us to grow into the men and women that you have called us to be. Your children, the men and women of God. We thank you. And we give you glory, O Father. And we thank you that it's a win-win for us as believers. If our heart tries to condemn us, <laughs> look, we got the double-edged sword. We know it's therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And also at the same time, we know that <laughs> The heart is deceitful, so we can't trust it anyway. (laughs) It's like a bad source. But your word is the truth. And help us to base our understandings, our evaluations upon your word and what's truth. We thank you. Thank you, I give you glory. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. 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 Mm. Woo! Wow. Well, I hope y'all were encouraged today and inspired in some way. And learned a little bit more about this God that we serve. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. 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 So. Yeah, it was good. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. So, with that in mind, we thank y'all for joining us today. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be trying to post this on YouTube, but if not, it's on Facebook. Please share it. And remember, this whole thing is couched in the context of walking in love. God's truth. Amen. So, Lord willing, we'll see y'all on Wednesday morning for P-Town Fresh Prayer. And if not, we'll see you next Sunday, Lord willing. Back again, same time at 12.30. <laughs> With no technical difficulties. We pray in advance. But um, look, we, I really want to encourage you to meditate on this word. This thing was so deep. And I encourage you to go back through. Open up the word yourself. Go back through and see what it says to you. See what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Go back through your, your notes. Maybe you didn't take notes. Maybe you feel like you might need to go back and take some notes. Because I got a feeling that God wants to have some real open and honest conversations with us. Amen. Amen. All right. Love y'all. Be blessed. And thanks again to the Facebook audience as well. Be blessed. I love to you all. Bless you all. Bye. Dallas, did you get your phone fixed? No.